see this. All right, talking with the number one recruit here in the country, Mark Hall. Mark, thanks for taking the time to talk to True Wrestling. Uh, haven't talked to you in a long time. Last time we talked was after Who's Number One. I'd like to take you back a little bit. You had a really dominating performance there. You went into that, you know, match with uh, Valencia as you know a top-ranked high school guy. But the way you won in such a dominating fashion kind of catapulted you to being the pound-for-pound number one recruit this year. Can you tell me a little bit about how it changed your the pressure you're under as a recruit and if it's changed the way you wrestle at all? Um, I don't find too too much pressure. Um, I just like to go out and wrestle, you know, no matter where where I am, you know, the, the same, I'm going to give the same amount of effort no matter where I am. Um, you know, maybe for the high school guys, you know, they might see me differently from when I was a freshman to, to now. Um, but truthfully, it's just all like, um, just all the same. Um, I'm not not gonna put something something on myself that it doesn't that, that I don't really need to if it's gonna affect how I compete. So you came out in that match way more aggressive than the previous time you wrestled him? Yeah. Put it on him. Can you just talk about what it, what the mindset is you have when you change your approach for a guy that you've seen once before? Mm-hmm. Um, or more than once? I do I do a relatively good job of scouting people. And, um, you know, from the first match to this match, to the, the who's number one match, excuse me, um, you know, there was just, there wasn't any, like, forward movement. So, like, um, I knew I could get him uncomfortable, make him do some silly things if I needed to. And, uh, you know, I ended up taking him down three times and turning him, you know, getting away. I was down in, in all three spots of, of folks out wrestling. So, um, when I, like, upped the pressure and uh, it made him uncomfortable, that's when I get... Like, like really good is, is my counter offense and, and when there's a lot of movement but when there's not a lot of movement is when I, uh, I struggle a little bit so I think I think uh, I think when I when I had a lot of offense and I was working to score points from every single position was, was when I was at my best good so can you tell me and everybody else who's listening uh, a little bit about your approach you know is wrestling work fun a combination what do you? How do you view wrestling? Um, it's all it's all fun for me. Uh, you know the places I get to go, I wouldn't be able to do if I played you know football or soccer or basketball or even you know stuff like that. So um, you know wrestling takes me wonderful places. I mean, meet wonderful people. You know they all have the same goals I do, and uh, you know actually you know some of the people I get to meet you know they already have the same same goal. You know they're already already. Olympic champions, world champions. So, um, I, mean, I think it's it's incredible. Like, as far as uh, you know, putting myself and holding myself to a high standard, and then I get to meet people who who hold themselves to that same that same standard. So, I think it's it's more fun than it is a job. Um, you know, of course, when you go into practice, you know, you're you're basically going to work. You know. I don't have, I haven't had like a source of income my entire life. You know, it's all been wrestling. Mm-hmm. I've always been busy with wrestling. So, um, you know, that's, that's my job, so to speak. But, you know, if you're doing something that you love, it's not really a job. You know, it's all, it's all fun. So when you go into your, your normal, your, your home wrestling room, how, how do guys deal with it when you're just going to put it on them night after night? Do they shut? Do they shut down? What happens? Can you tell um, me a little bit about that mindset? There's, there's a couple times. You know, I have I've been fortunate where, where um, you know, up until probably this year or even this year, you know, my coaches have pushed me to the brink. You know, they've pushed me to the brink of of getting upset and, and getting out of my my composure that I have. And uh, yeah, actually, sometimes it can be me that that gets upset. But but for the most part, you know, when I'm not wrestling my coaches. I just tell guys in the room just fight for every second because, because at the end of the day, like, 
a practice isn't going to be 24 hours. It's not going to be a, a day-long practice. You only get an hour and a half, two hours maybe each practice. So I think I did, um, as far as being a leader, you know, a good job of, of letting the guys know. No matter who they have, a match is only six minutes, you know. Um, when we're running, you know, we run for a max of maybe 15, 20 minutes. So nothing lasts forever. So that, that gives them more of a reason to, to uh, you know, just wrestle hard, run hard, work hard for the entire time. Gotcha. So it's been a couple weeks since Worlds. I know you didn't get the result you wanted. Can you tell me what, what you took away from the experience? Um, it, was, it was a fun experience, you know, outside of wrestling. Even the wrestling was, was really fun. I loved wrestling for all those people. You know, that's, that's uh, you know, the biggest stage as far as my age group goes. So um, it, was, it was good, you know, being on a team of – of you know, of, of very tough guys, and you know, having the Joe partners that I did on that team, from the weight below me, the weight above me, you know, even uh, being able to roll around with Anthony Kassar and Nathan Butler a little bit, you know, those guys understand how to how to move, so I'm not getting like crushed or anything by how big they are. But sure. um, you know, being in Brazil was was a fun time. We had an awesome hotel. I mean. Um, I actually got my hair cut in Brazil too, so that was you know pretty fun to do um, with a couple of the other guys, and uh, it was just a fun trip. Um, you know, we tried our best to just whether we won or lost, you know, we all just, just had fun. And and uh, you know, after the competition, you know, we we as a team didn't compete um, up to our our standard that you know maybe we held ourselves at, people held us at, so. At the same time, you know, we weren't going to let that, let that, you know, make us mad or, or, um, or make us like, like have a bad day or anything like that. You know, we just, just moved on with our lives and, and we were on the beach for the last day after the competition. So it was a really fun trip. It was, it was good. How safe did you feel down there? I know they moved the event location, right? Mm-hmm. And did, did the travel affect your wrestling? No, it was there wasn't any any type of uh, hostility. I felt uh, you know actually there were some really nice people in Brazil. You know, for us, we didn't speak a lick of Portuguese, but you know they helped us out as much as they could wherever we went. And um, I think they they ended up uh, the place we wrestled was was really nice too. You know, we had a sauna, we were at our fingertips. You know. Um, uh, bathrooms, you know, I mean, here a bathroom isn't, you know, something like, like we are like less of it when you're overseas and stuff like that, you know, like a good bathroom is, <laughs> is pretty important. So, right. So uh, we had that, you know, the mats were, were amazing. Um, it was just a good, good place, good environment. Nice. I, I know I've been hearing about the stress they're having putting on a, the Olympics, there's been all sorts of, you know, issues about hygiene there. So I just was kind of curious. Have you watched your video of your matches? Um, I watched. I watched a couple. Uh, I watched my Japan match, my Azerbaijan match, the two matches I won. But I probably won't be able to watch the match I lost for for a good while now. It's. I mean. I I play it over in my head and uh, I don't need to watch it. So what would you? So you playing it over in your head? What are you thinking about on that match after the fact? Uh, yeah, I I think uh, you know as far as as far as my wrestling goes, that wasn't that wasn't a match that that shows you know the type of wrestler I am. It was it was ugly when I was when I was wrestling it, and I knew it was ugly. The whole tournament was ugly, really. Um, you know, even the matches I won. I didn't feel the same as as I did when I was when I won the Cadet World Title. So, um, was yeah, that was it a different mentality, or is it just you were feeling more pressure? I mean, what's can you tell me? What was different? Uh, I, I think it was just uh, you know just a bad day, really. I mean, um, I was talking to Coach Slay a little bit after, <laughs> and um, my my 
parents as well. And uh, you know, I think that's all it was. I, I need to take, you know, take a pretty good break after this and um, and reevaluate. So, so even when I'm on my bad days, I can still compete with the best in the world. You know, that's how that's how guys go from good to great. Is even when they're they're not competing their best, you know, they're they're good can still be the best in the world. So, right. I was okay. I wasn't happy with how how I wrestled or how I uh, how I um, ended up but I'm, I'm happy with how I responded to how I was doing and the adjustments I made okay all right shifting gears a little bit um, a, a lot of guys who are stud high school wrestlers you know, they don't really cut much weight in high school and then it can sometimes be a problem when they get to college yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your weight? Are you cutting weight in high school? What you plan to wrestle in college, and that kind of information? Um, I don't. I haven't cut weight in like as far as high school folk style wrestling goes. I haven't cut weight in maybe two years, three years. Um, you know, maybe like like six pounds, seven pounds or so. But I, I have like six pound practices. So as far as as far as that, like I don't. Cut, cut too much weight. Um, I cut most of my weight during the freestyle season. I went 163 this year. Yeah. So that was it. Wasn't really even cutting. It was just watching my watching my weight. I'd actually weigh about 177, 176 or so. Walk so around or after while you're working out? Oh, is that your walk around weight? Yeah. Okay. So uh, when I'm <clears throat> I was in high school, you know, 170 comes easy, and then 172 comes even easier after. After Christmas, so I don't would, cut too much. is your family big enough that you're going to be growing taller? Um, my dad's six three, Ooh. so um, I might. I have a little bit more to grow into. I hope. I don't want to be be the size. I want to grow, hopefully, an inch more. And maybe put on ten more pounds or so, and be a solid, you know, one seventy four pounder come college. Okay. Uh, can shift in gears now talking about college can, we talked last time you told me all the a list of schools that you had in mind but it's been almost a year can you tell me what the criteria you are using to choose a college is um, right now I have a lot of my official visits set up um, I've won to uh, Penn State set up Ohio State set up um, Minnesota and Wisconsin set up so I'm still looking to get a couple more um, unofficial visits and official visits in there. But uh, as far as those four, those are the ones I have scheduled already. And um, I'll probably be letting people know when, when I'm, I'm going on them. Um, either when I'm going on them or, or maybe like a week before they start. So um, I like keeping people in the loop as far as that goes. Like... <clears throat> um, uh, when I have um, my visits and stuff, you know, my, my athletic director knows about it. My, of course, my parents um, will probably be on those trips with me, um, all my friends. So it's pretty important to me. I got gotcha. you. Uh, is there any chance that you're going to be going to the OTC for a year? Um, no. Maybe no. maybe after high school I've been considering it, but I'll, I'll be – well, my senior year I'm definitely finishing – Right. At, at Apple Valley, and then uh, you know maybe after after high school, it's like sixty percent, seventy percent sure right now. Um, that you'll take a year at the OTC before you go to college. Yeah, and and that also depends on that also depends on where where I go to college. Um, but uh, as far as as far as freestyle goes, I love wrestling freestyle. It's I like freestyle up there, folk style, I think. So, um, so, Can I just ask you, so I've talked to a lot of high school wrestlers or good wrestlers, uh, very good wrestlers, and they all say the same thing. Can you tell me what it is that you like more about freestyle than folk style? Um, I don't know. I, 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 like, uh, I like being on my feet a lot. So um, you know, I think if I could put, put my offense up against anyone 
in the world, I think, you know, it's it's right up there with, with anyone. As, as long as I'm, like, firing on all cylinders, you know, I think I can compete with anyone at my weight class. So, um, I just think, like, like being on my feet is my favorite position. And so, I think, I think top and bottom wrestling isn't, it doesn't, um, you know, slow slow things down if you, if you're in a fun match. But a lot of the times, it, it uh, you know, it just it's not boring to watch. But there's not a lot going on that you can you can see if the, if guys are on their feet. So, in freestyle is a lot of um, neutral wrestling, and and parterre is just as important. And parterre is a lot more fun to watch in freestyle than it is top and bottom folk style. Gotcha. I agree. Um, back to the recruiting process. I mean, I, I'm sure it's been going on, but at who's number one? You were you're being recruited by Olympic champions, national champions, guys that are a few years older than you to you know maybe even a you know a generation older than you. And it's a lot of pressure, right? You know, they're friends, but they're recruiting you. And can you tell me just a little bit about that process? A lot of recruits say it's a very stressful process. How are you dealing with it? Um, you know, like I said before, uh, you make a lot of friends through wrestling and, uh, a lot of times those friends, like from, from when I was a kid, those friends are, are, uh, college coaches. So all these college coaches that, that might be recruiting me, I've known since I was seven and eight years old. So, um, having to tell, you know, there's going to come point in time of course where I'm gonna have to tell them no I don't want to go to their college but you know there there was a time where I was like kind of like getting upset with myself because I was like well I don't want to I don't want to make these guys upset with me but at the same time you know I'm I'm going to like it's it's inevitable like it's 100% that I'm gonna have to tell a, a few people no so uh, it's it's uh it's not like it's not something that I'm getting like totally like upset with or anything, but uh, it's, it's just gonna have to happen. You know, that's right. Home, that's it. Now, so open one door means you're not gonna go through the other doors that are next to it, right? That's mm -hmm. right. Um, getting back to the the recruiting thing, so you're gonna announce live on Flow. Was that your idea? Was that their idea? How'd that um, all come together? It was a little bit of both. I think uh, it was just something, you know, you know, make the sport fun at the same time. Uh, you know, this isn't as much for me as it is for, for any wrestling fan. Um, you know, Tyus Jones last year, one of the top, he, he was the um, top point guard in the country, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, he got MVP, pretty sure, at the NCAA basketball tournament this year for Duke. And he had ESPN at, at our high school, and I went to his commitment too. So that was pretty cool. And I just wanted some something along those lines. And, and floor wrestling is is obviously you know one one of if not the top wrestling website wrestling uh, on newsfeed of of 2015. So that's who I wanted to do it with. And of course they were they were all in. Gotcha. Um do you know where you're going to go already? Because when you talk about it, you always you get a little smile. So do you already know where? Yeah. Uh, I don't really, I don't really know exactly where I want to go. Um, I have a good idea of of places, a couple places, like two or three places that are in the top, and you know, like the other, like the other couple are just, you know, like they're just there, just in case. But uh -huh. you know, I have. I have, you know, those, those three where I know it's the right place for me. It's just a matter of, um, you know, getting to know the coaches a little bit more, getting to know the team a little bit more, the, the place a little bit more. So. Every time I've talked to you, you mentioned Penn State kind of right at the top. Mm -hmm. And you got a real grin and a smile and a warmth for the coach. Uh, yeah. David Taylor, um, can you just talk about that relationship? Um, with with David, I've known David 
I've known of David uh, obviously when he was in high school and I was in and I was a kid, um, elementary school going into high school, and then uh, um, Coach Kale and Coach Casey. Coach Kale, I uh, actually have a, like a couple posters signed from him, pictures with him from when I was a kid. Um, actually, when he was recruiting John Reader, uh-huh. Iowa State. John's from my hometown of Davison. Uh-huh. Um, I, I went to their house when Kel was there and Bobby Douglas was there when I was maybe eight or nine. So that was a pretty cool experience as well. Um, totally. Yeah. Coach Coach Casey, I've been getting to know really well um, as far as uh, a wrestling goes, building a relationship um, outside of wrestling too. Um, I don't know Coach Coach Cody too well, but uh, but those three are are probably people I have the best best relationship. Okay. Yeah. What well, can you tell me? So you're taking a little break now after Worlds. I, I'm guessing until the actual start of the high school season. Um, kind of. I'll, I'll be going. I'll be going to uh, senior world championships. You will. So uh, actually, next next Friday or Saturday. I'll be with uh, a Jordan Burroughs as a training partner. Okay. So that'll be that'll be pretty pretty fun. Um, you know. Now you didn't mention Nebraska, or did you? Uh, that's that's probably going to be my my fifth official. Okay. Day. All right. So here's your training partner at senior, for Senior Worlds. Yeah. Oh, that's he, awesome. Uh, he gave me a call before for Junior Worlds. I'm really close with with Coach Manning as well. <clears throat> so. We're going to do that, make that happen, and then uh, I'll be going to Senior Worlds with him, you know, getting him ready, you know, whatever he needs, I'll be at his fingertips to do it with with God's speed, hopefully. But uh, I'm really excited for that, but then after that... That's a great experience, and that's yeah. awesome. So after that, I'll definitely be taking a little bit off. Okay. Uh, do you have any specific goals for the coming season? Um, Wrestling goals. I think I want to win. Uh, you know, obviously, I want to be as dominant as I can. Um, but as far as uh, accolades, um, I want to win my sixth team state title with the guys, and you know my sixth individual state title. But I think I think to me the team state title will mean a lot more. So. Um, you know that that's definitely right at the top. Six individual, you know, make make history in that in that regard. Um, you know, there's a few tournaments that I haven't won in a while. Um, the Clash is a team tournament. Um, if we go to the Cheesehead this year, I've never won the Cheesehead, so probably probably go there. i um, win the Cheesehead, and then um, the Christmas tournament is a tournament. I'm, I was the first five-time Christmas tournament champion last year, so break my record and win the six one will be huge. So there's a lot to to do this season, yeah. So nice. And have the coaches and partners to do it with. Me. I'm excited. Very good. Uh, so I just wanted to, to circle back on one thing. You said that I think you said. That there's a sixty, at least a sixty percent chance that after you graduate from high school, you're thinking about spending a year at the OTC. Yeah. So that would delay your enrollment one year into college. Mm-hmm. So that that gives all the people who are speculating out there a lot more chips to start moving around. Um, uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks for talking to me. Um, have fun out, worlds. I'll, I hope I see you out there. And um, good luck this season. Thank you very much. All right. Great talking to you, Mark.